I guess if you're used to Windows, um, you have your hard drives that show up as C, D, E. If you plug something in, it's like G, whatever. Uh, Unix doesn't work like that. And if you have a Mac, you might be kind of familiar with the concept. Unix, you have a single file system hierarchy, and the, it's rooted at what's called root, and um, that is just slash is the uh, top of the file system, and everything comes from root. So if I want to reference a file, um, like globally, no matter where I am, um, you can anchor it at root, so I can So I can see the file .bash rc, um, and that's kind of its global reference. Um, you can also reference files um, relative to where you are, and just don't start it with a slash. Um, and like if you want to look at a file, just give it the name. It needs to be in the same directory that you're in. Um, so all. All Unixes, including Linux, have this single file system. And when you um, want to plug in a hard drive or a thumb drive, um, you need to mount it somewhere along that file system. So in Ubuntu, it'll probably show up under like the slash media somewhere. Um, but I think the important point is compared to Windows, where you, the files and the drive are the same thing. They're that letter uh, in Unix and Linux. Um, you have devices, which represent the, the hardware, or the disk, and then you have where you mount them to. So you can actually plug in the drive, and it'll show up on your computer without having the files accessible, because they're, they're two separate things. And everything, like I said, is starts with this single file system hierarchy. Um, the first um, layer of files under root are these, yeah, that's all of them. Um, these are really common directory names that you'll see on any computer. And sometimes if you need to look for a program, they might be in here. You guys should have something similar in your VM. Um, and I'll just quickly explain what each of these are. Um, boot contains files needed when your computer's starting. Um, it contains the kernel itself. So it contains, uh, this is the kernel itself. It's The kernel is just a file that gets loaded into memory when you start your computer, um, and some other special stuff. Um, dev is a special uh, directory that has uh, files which represent all the devices on your computer. Uh, and Linux, basically, there's some exceptions, but basically everything is a file. So your mouse is actually a file on the computer. And as you move it, it, there's something else that's reading from the file, and it's spitting out a bunch of weird characters, and it's interpreting that as movement. Your disk is a file. When you want to write information to the hard drive and save it there, you're actually writing it to a file that represents your hard drive. Um, and that's actually one of the reasons why Linux is so powerful, because it's easy to program, because all these exotic different things are just represented as files. Um, Etsy is where all the system-wide configuration files go. Um, if you're having trouble, you're probably going to wind up in Etsy at some point. Um, there's a whole bunch of things here. Uh, your usernames and passwords are stored here. Um, uh, I think default configs for Firefox, and you name it. Everything's pretty much in, in Etsy. Uh, we also have home is where your, your files are going to be. Um, so I have, you know, I have me on the computer and my wife Kate, um, and so we have our own directories where it's kind of like, what is it, users on Windows or C colon users, something like that. Um, it's basically the, the equivalent of this slash home. Uh, the other semi-important ones, question? Oh, no, sorry, I just put it in the app. Um, let's see. 
bin and sbin contain uh, the actual programs that you're going to run, just the program file itself. Uh, all the kind of support files that the program needs are going to be under user. Um, and uh, so the file system is organized a little bit differently than it is in Windows. In Windows, you install something and everything that the program has is under program files. In Linux, uh, files that a program has are distributed throughout the computer in um, locations where uh, the purpose of the file is the same. So the actual executables go in bin, images and stuff go under slash user slash share. Um, in here, um, libraries that don't run but programs link into go into lib. Um, and the reason for that is you can actually um, enforce certain limitations on directories and everything below them, like say, nothing can be executed uh, under this directory, and it's for security. Um, so you can kind of have fine grain, grain control over what goes on in your system. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind if you install something. It's actually going to be sprinkled all throughout the file system, not just in one place. Um, some programs don't lend themselves well to that. Uh, Google Earth is one, um, and that installs itself in a directory called opt, where you'll find, like, if you want to install MATLAB on your laptop, um, it doesn't play very nice with the Unix file system, so we just throw it under opt and call it MATLAB, and then it's just a whole mess of stuff. Um, Questions on the file system. So, what are the dates and times? Is it the? Oh, okay. So, L, okay. yeah. Um, every file has similar. Uh, it's called file metadata. Um, it, you keep track of when the file was accessed, when it was last modified, when it was created, um, and uh, the permissions, which Andy will get into a little bit more. Um, and so, yeah, and the, the size and stuff like that. So all this stuff right here are the permissions, the kind of cryptic one. Um, so the important thing is that it's just one file system, and everything gets tacked on on top of that. Like, for example, um, no, no, no. Um, boot on my computer is actually a separate uh, partition on my hard drive, but it just shows up seamlessly on boot. Um, you can see these things. Uh, there's a command called lsblk, which will print a nice little hierarchy of devices that you have and where they're mounted. And then you have also another program called find mount, which will print out all the file systems uh, that are mounted on your computer in kind of a nice um, user visible way. Um, and then I think the last important thing about file systems is you have kind of two different kinds. You have like ones that are intuitively normal. Uh, they just store files. And then you have these things called API file systems, which expose features of the kernel or um, other things that don't necessarily mean files. Uh, for example, proc is a file system, which exports a whole bunch of information about processes running on the computer. Um, and so the three big ones are um, sys, proc, and dev are the three big API file systems. They're not actually files that exist anywhere. They just are in memory, and they represent stuff about the state of your computer. And then you can also have memory-based file systems. So uh, temp and run on my computer are not actually, if you write something to them, they're just written to memory, and when the computer reboots, they're gone. Um, so they're just these ephemeral file systems. Um, and then I guess the next big thing about file systems is permissions on the files. Right. Any questions? Yeah. How do you access the metadata about the file? So the LL or LS is a oh, this core like command. This it'll, it'll print that stuff out. There's also another command called stat, which will print out or information about a file, but usually LS is, is what you want. 
and we'll be looping back and talking talking about a lot of these commands in more detail.